All right, everybody in Facebook, I've seen so much out there in the past few years. I traveled extensively doing seminars from 2000 to 2016, extensively. 13 different countries, some multiple times. Not teaching, even though my base is Kempo, I, you know, I have several different black belts and other disciplines. It's not to impress your pressure upon you the, that I'm a serious martial artist and a school owner, like a lot of you out there. So, <clears throat> When I go into different schools that taught Goju-Ru or Kung Fu or Kempo, I would analyze what they're doing and then just add in the quantum Kyusho physics, as I like to call it, into their applications to make it work much better most of the time. It's like a science. So you can go through school and get your undergrad, you can work on your master's and get your PhD. So this level is more like working on your PhD related to the martial art field. So what I thought I'd do today is I'm going to do this once a month. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a technique, play with it, analyze it, break it down, add in these quantum Kyusho physics principles into it. Okay, I'll try and keep it in layman terms. So I have an extensive science background. So I work as a naturopath in integrated medicine in a clinic worked in Western medicine for umpteen years in pathology, autopsy, surgical services, so I have a pretty good understanding of how the body works, all right? Not just academically, but being in the field practically. So I have two different body types I'd like to bring in because everybody, when they practice something, you're always practicing the same person, like sparring the same person all the time, you get to know each other. But on the street, you're not going to have that same opportunity. So I want to show you how you can make this work no matter on a big person or a small person, if you apply this, the rule of thumb is, and I like to apply this in the quantum Kyusho physics, is the right combination, in the right tempo, at the right time, at the right level, will give you the right result you need. That's the formula. Okay? Uh, bring in the first one. Here it is. So, I thought I'd use snapping twig. It's pretty straightforward. Problem is, when I see a lot of people pushing, they're all doing this when they're pushing. So you know, somebody pushes you like this on the street, you know they train somewhere. <laughs> anyway, so a lot of times, unless your sensei sense is tingling, you're not going to know when to push you. It's like in the critical zone phase. You're in a confrontation, the guy pushes at you. First thing you do, your hands come up and say, hey man, I don't know trouble. Guy's going to push at you again, you know three zones you're going to control, height, width, and depth. So when he pushes again, that's the motion I want to use. I want to pull this in and snap that. As I pull this in, I'm hitting a point called triple warmer three. You don't have to know a lot about that, but it's a you have the five element theory. Fire melts metal, metal cuts wood, wood penetrates the earth, earth dance water, water quenches fire. You're not going to remember all that. All you need to know is I'm going to hit this point right here, between the fourth and fifth metacarpal space, the two bones that support the back of the hand. As I pull back in this one, I'm hitting this one here on large intestine 10. Well, that's metal. So fire meets melting, there is a melting point there. That one's just in the outside crease. You can press on that, or you can strike that. So the push is coming in here. I do this using two-way action, something that I learned and developed and got from the late and great Professor Wally J. Um, and his son Leon, who travels extensively out there, most of you may know him, uh, will talk about this principle. and Where they got this cue show to work was because of his father. Okay. So as he pushes, that's the two-way action there. Now as I come down this way, like this is a, a, a forming a crane form as I strike inside the cubical fossa, the hollow of the elbow. At the same time I strike this, I'm going to be striking into the point up here in the neck. And people just say you're just striking the neck blindly, but this point I want to hit specifically is called small intestine 17. Right at the end of the jaw. You can press on that point. But what I'm sorry about that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be striking that point. If I just strike that point blindly, you can resist, I'm hitting that point and all I'm doing is pissing him off. But the way to activate that point, one way to activate that point, point, when I hit this, when I strike on this point here and do an opposing force method and strike that point there, that's the effect I get. Stopping right there. From that position here, I'm going to hit triple warmer three. If he has glasses on, you can ask him to take him off. Don't worry about it. Triple one with three hit from back to front at the corner of the eye. That'll blind the guy. If I may just take him off for a second. Sure. If I just touch it this way, he feels it. But if I touch it that way, that's a different effect. So that's the way you're going to be coming in. Two-way action this way. Don't hit one-way action. Hit two-way. 
once I've hit that action here, a lot of people say they like to sandwich the jaw. I don't know how many jaws you sandwiched out there, <clears throat> the effects. If you're much larger and they're smaller, you probably get that effect. You may or you may not. But why would you want to risk? Right at the free end here, at the level of the Adam's apple, is a point, a melting point, large intestine. So fire melts metal. We talked about that. Just by demonstrating this, if I just seal this side and tap on this side, that's the effect you're going to get. Now, imagine if I did that, if I did the compression there on that effect. You're going to get an extensive effect on that. In Kempo, I've always been told, well, my background in Kempo, training with extensively for a number of years with uh, Master Joe Palonzo and out of Baltimore, and uh, rest in peace, um, Grandmaster Frank Trail out of Pasadena, California. So I had the privilege of training privately, extensively for these two gentlemen in that field that really gave me the tools to help make what I do work here in the Q-Show world, okay? Which I learned from George Dillman, Grandmaster George Dillman. So this point here, multi-point. So in Kepler, you want to, you want to be, uh, uh, make sure that when you're doing any of these things that you have the proper timing, you have the proper distance. You have the core principles that you need to make and analyze each technique work. So now, if I bring in somebody much larger, <clears throat> so on the street, you get a guy this size, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and he's pushing at you, the first thing you want to do is look for a sign that says exit, in all honesty. But if you're backed into a corner, maybe he's taking your girlfriend or whatever, as he pushes on this wing here, he's not ready to punch yet. You know, you need to do that. But if he gives me a shove and he comes in and boom, that, see how I just turn him that way? As I boom, turn this way here. Now, striking this guy, if I didn't do anything else and I just strike this guy here, resist. Oh my God, resist. Oh. I'm not getting anything but making him really mad. So, on a bigger guy, if you don't know the proper areas to weaken the body, you're in for a you know, a lot of trouble. As he pushes here, when I do this, the same principle I did on the other gentleman, as I strike down on this, pulling this that way, like a bullwhip effect, down on a 45 this way, turning his body, now when I have that, that opens up to me. Bends the knees, opens the body up. So when I strike this point here, I'm just going to tap it that way there. Now I got an effect, yes? Yes, sir. From that effect there, now I have that angle from that, from that position there, now, you may say you have to reach up and hit there. If I just cheat a and bring him down here, now he's at my level. So if I just tap here, there's the effect you get. So sometimes you have to add another weapon. If he's a big guy like that, I'm not going to reach up and do this because I have no power. I would just add an insert a move. In Kepler, you can do that. You can rearrange. You can insert. You can modify. You can adjust. You can um, uh, take away. You can add. So if I tap that leg there, that's going to bring him down enough just to do that motion there on that. So those are the two melting points right there. Large intestine uh, 18, again, is at the level of the Adam's apple. You don't have to know exactly where that is as long as you know that if I hit here and tap here, I get that. If I just tap the one side, you get nothing. So that's why this comes into effect. You can do the jaw. <clears throat> All you're going to really do is piss the guy off. I just tap there, I'm just going to touch it right there, that's the difference. Okay, imagine the effect you get from that. Then you just want to make your getaway. You don't want to stand around and see what's going to happen. So again, as he pushes, that's the first move, that's the second move, that's the third move, and that's the fourth move. If I bring in the first guy again, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, sir. So again, as he pushes, again, you want to control the height, width, and depth. So it's the right level at the right time, give you the right result. Now. From here, if I want to add to that and add the extension in or partial extension, as I, if I just trap here, you just resist that way. See if he's doing that? But now you have upper and lower casement. They want to work in unison. When I move this motion here, this is what we call water stance. So what I'm hitting here is the three conception points that activate yin energy, which is the primary source on the front of the body. As I cross here and I just tap there, that's the effect I get now because this one here complements that angle and this. And when I strike in that point there, lift them up that way, strips the energy. So now I'm going to come right across that way, turn the body that way. So this kick hits into what we call split 11. 
two thirds down, one third up from the uh, inside of the knee. As I land, I'm going to be tapping on the opposite side of the jaw, stomach five. Stomach five can be hit up or down, it's at the free end of the ramus. If I just close your jaw, if I just hit stomach five like that, not too much effect. But if I tap that one there and then hit stomach five that way, that's the effect you get. So can you imagine if I, boom, and you hit that at the same time, okay? So again, you have the base move here, boom. You have the extension, boom, boom. Here's the other point about that. Come around this side. Sir. If he pushes here, this position here, you want to make sure you turn the body so prevent that. When he turns the body back and he goes to hit that, you're already set up for this position here. Bridge the gap, push drag in. Now, from the extension crossing in and down, come up, claw, strip. Now, you have that area, and you can come back up. And bring the big guy in again. Thank you very much, sir. Again, a different body type. Turn it this way, please. Oh, over here is good. Right here. As he pushes in this way, so that's pulling here. Lifting here, turns the body. But as I turn this in, bull whip effect, now I can strike that stomach, or, or, or small intestine 17. Once I hit 17, it's like a bull whip, this is gonna come back into 23. You could also have triple warmer 17, right inside behind the ear. You can see the effect it does on him here. Again, I can't reach up and do that move, so I can modify the move, kick inside here, now I have this. Now I can have that effect. Come in across if you want to, bang, and then you can come back up. Again, hitting in with the jaw, tighten up. If I hit him here this way, if I tap here, hit there, there's the effect. Okay, because they're, they're connecting points, yeah? Yin and yang. This is being yin, that being yang. Anytime you hit center line, you activate all the inside points here on both arms and inside points on the legs. If he just does this, just clear for a second, yeah. If I just hit on the arm, if he grabs me, I hit on the arm, oh my goodness, I will make him mad, you see? But if I can take away, if I can just tap here, boom, there, now I have it, you see? Now I have control, okay? So always go to center line, forget the boobies. Go to center line. When I was in, in surgery, they always open up center line. They don't open up over here. This is where they open up. There's your point to go to, okay? But again, at a person this size, it's the right combination. So again, you have the triple warmer three back here. This is the one between the fourth and fifth metacarpal. Okay, that one here, you use that, you can use that in, you know, in jiu-jitsu, and they do that to take the guy down, you know? The two-way action. Sorry about that. Okay, so you have to have that. If I just push on this, he can resist. Oh, oh I will do the jiu-jitsu soon, but if you do the two-way action, just slowly, this way here, you see, he will go to the ground. That's the, you know, if you understand the mechanics behind that. So again, if he pushes, boom, that's the way action I want. I want to strike on that point, pull that up please. On the outside, this is large intestine 10. You can use this to press to take him to the ground, yeah? Okay, so that's the point I'm hitting as he pushes. I'm hitting on that point and that point at the same time. Same time, but I'm using this action. And at the same time, I'm using my lower casement to complement my upper casement, okay? To allow margin for air. So, this way here, striking in and down that way on the 45, turns the body and allows opening to the neck. Striking triple warmer, 23. If I just hit this way, he can feel it. But if I go like that, you see, I do it lightly. But he's at the level now where I could do the compression. Striking in on below the umbilicus, the belly button, the three conception points, I won't get into that. Two are fire, one's water. But I use the hammer fist. So I strike, but I use the crosser. If I just strike, you can resist. Nothing happens. But when I cross this way, same time, now I have result. Pull him up, and then you have Stomach five on the opposite side, but you come in and up this motion here. There's your two-way action under the ramus. Stomach five can be hit up or down. Okay? Thank you, sir. So, again, that's just a little...
bit of the principles you can put into snappy twig. I know a lot of you know snappy twig, all you're really good at it. I mean, speed's good, you can have the speed, but if you don't understand the science, the mechanics behind it, it could be very detrimental to your health when you're out there in the street, and you don't want to be a master of the superficials. So, this is just a little bit what I add on the science portion of quantum uh, q show physics uh, into what you could do in a Kempo, you could add it in Gojiru, Shotokan, Shirinjiru, I mean, Taekwondo, I mean, that's the things I add in. They do the fancy movements, I show them where to put the points in to make them work more effectively, yeah? So, hope you enjoy that. Thanks for the time. See you soon.